Hey everybody, it is Friday, February 19th, and it is time for my sketchbook review. Uh, this week we have a eh, pretty good chunk of doodles, and I'll go ahead and go over those. I'll run through my week real quick. Um, super, super sick Monday and Tuesday. I felt better Wednesday. I was... I was feeling better. It's like I was feeling better, but I wasn't feeling better because I've been on pins and needles waiting to hear about my fingerprints and why I'm not getting um, allowed to go take my NCLEX exams. And um, my four week mark was actually today, but I got too anxious and I, I checked it out on Wednesday to find out. And uh, I was told that my school never sent my degree proof. And I was like, okay, well, all right, we can get this settled. So I called the school. They're like, well, we need proof that the state didn't get it because we have proof that we sent it. And I was like, okay, eh, I got the proof. And then I sent it to them. And then they're like, okay, we'll resend it. I was like, okay, as long as it's resent. And they're like, if you don't hear anything about getting your ability to test in a week, then call us. And I was like, all right, because it's been four weeks, guys, all my classmates, and I'm so happy for them. Like, I'm super proud of all of them. I've not seen a single person fail yet. I don't know that they would put it up there if they did, though. But everybody's passing, and everyone's doing really well, and I'm so proud of them all. I'm so happy. And I want to be there, too. I want to be proud and happy and successful with them, too. So, come on, guys. Help me out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that got taken care of. And then what was yesterday? Yesterday it was a bum day. I was feeling down and I'm still feeling a little bit down today um, because of reasons. But I'm not going to get into those reasons. There's no point. It's not even worth it anymore. But I did have a four hour long live stream. I think it was Wednesday. It might have been Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday um, with uh, Al Tintero over there at Harp and Stars and we did some doodles and everything. And if you guys want to see those, go check out my Tumblr. There's always a link below. Um, yeah, you can see them there. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see our styles together. And it's really, really interesting is to see the fact that I started with a regular graphics tablet. And I haven't used one in about mm, since I got married. So it's been eight years. And like my the muscle memory was completely gone to begin with. I was struggling. I was so mad at myself. I'm like, why can't I even draw just a regular simple circle? And um, it eventually came back towards the end of the night. It took about four hours for it to come back strong. And right there towards the end of the night, I was doing really, really good. But then the stream was over and I was like, eh. So now I'm back on my Cintiq. Um, but for my for draw pile, which is what we were using to draw together, I have to use my, um, my, my Intuos 3 my regular graphics tablet because it doesn't recognize the stroke on, not the stroke, it doesn't recognize the pressure sensitive, it does recognize the pressure sensitivity. What am I trying to say? It's like the strokes I make on my Cintiq don't match in draw pile because there's just something, there, there's something missing in between, like there's a delay or just sort of a break in between the surface itself and the application. And it got too frustrating. It just wasn't worth it to me and I was like you know something let's just for funsies pull out the graphics tablet and see if it works and it actually works really really good um, with the program it's just I needed to kind of use it oops I dropped my phone oh well but now that I kind of got my muscle memory back I think what I'm gonna start doing is like maybe once a week I'm going to pull that thing out and I'm going to practice with it because I really need to you know my Cintiq the the power cord that goes in and powers the actual display, it's been kicking in and kicking in and out like the wires. It's kind of like when a wire connector. Oh, I'll just show you guys. It's like this part right here where it's like legit in there, like it's factory sealed and all that good fun stuff. It's not something I can get into or replace easily. Well, if that's in the wrong angle, I lose my display. And it's been going on for about a year now. It's progressively getting worse, but, you know, part of me, like, I don't want to... This is an old model Cintiq anyway. They don't even repair them anymore. I did look into it. Someone suggested that I do that, and I did. They don't repair them anymore. They just... Ex they don't even exchange them. They take them in as exchange. That's how old they are. So... I mean, I could probably pay someone to try and fix it, but I think I'm just better off spending that money on potentially a new tablet if once I get a job and I got to get a job. Um, but my Intuos 3, that thing has lasted me for like, I, I think it's 15 years old or something like that. It's, I got it when I was, yeah, I got it when I was in high school. It might have been college, so it might not be quite 15, it might be 13. But um, yeah, so I've had it that long and it's still working like, 
there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I've never had an issue with it. So, you know, I still am going to use it and it's a good backup. And if I practice with it, I know I'll get better at it. And typically when I have an outline to go off, if I do pretty good. But all right, so five minutes into this video, I haven't even talked about a single sketch. So let's go ahead and do that before you guys get too bored and completely leave my video altogether. So this is where we left off last week with um, the Lizarine and Piper stuff. Warning, there's more Lizarine and Piper this week. And we're starting right off with it. So these are doodles from a role play um, that actually finished. Uh, this is Liz Rain over here. I was just kind of dueling out chibis and he's calling her a goof. And it happened. He did call her a goof. And she's like, I am, I do not look like a goof. And then he just like, yeah, he do. You look like a goof. So it's actually a really cute exchange. Um, I do like those little cute little exchanges between them. Like it's very childish, but at the same time, it's, it's playful at the same time. Like, yeah, she's pouting, but she's not really that upset. Um, Ultimately, she figures out and agrees that she probably looks like a goof. She does end up dropping her eel. She does end up dropping her mask. She doesn't wear it anymore. But for the first, um, I say probably about four months or so of her stealing and prowling around, she probably wears a mask. Uh, during the night, she did end up taking the mask off, though, just because she got tired of his lip. And, uh... <laughs> lip and then he stole a kiss at the very end of the night she was a little distracted because he shared his food with her and um while she was thinking about how awesome and kind that was he stole a kiss and then ran off so super super cute exchange i was very happy with how it turned out it was written really well like ugh, everything fell in place like where it was supposed to it was like i love it when that magic happens um i was trying to do a mildred yeah a mildred uh bloodworth and it didn't I wasn't really trying that hard to be honest, so it's really on my own fault. But um, yeah, I tried to doodle her real quick. But I like got so focused on this teacup, this cute little teacup with the little wilted flowers. Super cute. Liked it. And I was working on cherry. I was going to revamp her style, but then I decided, you know what? I do have Victorian era cherry. I think if I just got rid of the hat, everything else falls into place. She looks exactly how she should for that time for uh, for a woman and everything. And I do want to bring her into Harp and Stars, but I'm going to have to change her personality just a little bit. I can't have her as psychopathic crazy as I want her to be because she still has to function in society. So, and Cherry typically, um, the way I've had her written, isn't functioning in society. If she's in society, she's causing problems or she just isn't in society. Those are the two states of Cherry in the way I have written her. Uh, but for Harp and Stars, I would have to bring her into society and... Um, I think I would want to put her in like Missy's gang and make her like one of the chick bullies that run around the burrows or something like that. It'd be it'd be interesting to fit her in there. I think that she could cause quite a bit of trouble. And I think that just as a as an option, I'm going to fill out the character and put in for it. Just because um I like having options. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and use her uh current design and just go with that. Because there's nothing wrong with it. I am going to do a uh, new art for it though. Because it's always an... I always look for an excuse to draw on the cherry art. Um, anything that's covered up in pink this week is stuff I don't want you guys to see. Either it's spoiler, it's inappropriate, it's mature, it's whatever. And honestly, I just don't want to deal with the hullabaloo that comes along with all that stuff. Uh, some alt shipping here with uh, Alternate Universe um, Piper and Edwing. Uh, they have a different kind of relationship in alternate universes where, like, he's a concubine to her. Where, like, mice rule and all that. It's like, you take the world the way it is. And this is just me playing around, obviously. I always have to throw in this disclaimer because I feel like someone's going to take something I say as gospel and it's not, you guys. I screw around with other people's ideas all the time. They're typically cool with it. As long as I make it clear that it's not what's actually going to happen. And it's not ever going to happen. Whatever. But this is just me screwing around for drawing ideas. And I've told you guys that before. Take your characters. Put them in different situations. Different scenarios. Flip around who's in control. Flip around who's in political power. Put them in different time frames. You know. Give, give them different ages. You know. All of that, it all helps to further the character development. Like Piper in this instance, where she's like a little princess. Like, I'm amazed at how much she keeps, but how much she loses. Like, she does have an independent streak the way she is now. But the second you take away that need for her to take care of herself, she becomes like a child. A whiny little baby. But she's still a very kind whiny little baby. And it's annoying, but I totally love it because... 
it's a new side of her I didn't get to know or see or whatever but whatever but um they're together anyway so whatever and then I was looking up some dressing tutorials for Victorian clothing because I kind of just wanted to know for my own curiosity sake and um it was a lot of work for them to get dressed back then so I decided to draw a picture of Piper getting dressed because there's also a lot of motion in dressing I don't think people realize how much motion there is in their everyday activities as I'm sitting here I'm moving my hand like like you guys can see it and I talk with my hands and it's terrible but yes so I drew a quick picture of Piper getting dressed and like I love how the hair turned out I don't know why it's just something very nice about it and then like I elongated the arm but I don't feel like it pulls away from the piece because it kind of gives that dramatic effect of her reaching down to pull in and she's still kind of leaning so I don't know it gave it a really really nice look and I just I'm actually thinking about scanning and finishing this one because it turned out really nice very happy with it. very very happy with it um current day Piper and Edwin he's kind of teaching I had like I was drawing a little piano here and he was like teaching her piano I'm not sure that he would actually have the patience to teach her because I think if it was just for fun or just screwing around he'd be okay with it um but uh I I know how musicians are because <laughs> my husband actually is one little known fact Terry's husband is a musician and he gets so annoyed when I just want to play around on the piano and he's trying to teach me something so um which is why I don't let him teach me anything anymore. But uh, yes, it was just a cute little idea I had that maybe he's just teaching her just a couple little things on the piano just for fun. Just, I don't know, spending time together or whatever. Uh, I do alt ship them. I've told you guys that. Like, I think I just said, said it like, I have my favorites. I like Lizarine and Piper, 110%, like number one. Uh, Edwing and Piper, number two. Like, it, it's right there, number two. <laughs> like. It's almost like in competition. It's just I really, really like Liz Rain and Piper together way too much. But Edwing and Piper is a very close second. Um, and then if I knew Hermes better, I probably would be able to place him a little bit better. I don't know the character, though. All I know is he's a delivery boy. And um, Larry and Piper is also another one that I ship. But um, those are my top two, honestly. What can you do? He's a Bloodworth. It's hard to say no. This is that all that AU. Um, like I said, she's very childish. Like everything's a power. Every you know, she whines. She doesn't really whine. It's just like she wants things to be her way, and they don't necessarily always go her way. She gets her way a lot though. But yeah, I don't know. It's an idea I like. Part of me really wants to develop, but part of me is like, eh, don't get too attached to something that's like gonna just end up being this thing you do on the side that nobody knows about so I do like the way I drew him but I will admit to the fact that I was basically going off of Al's style and I try to stay away from that it's not that I don't respect and love her style because trust me I do I just I don't like imitating other artists too closely because then I start to lose the things that make me uniquely my own artist and yeah so this is about as close as I'm ever gonna get sorry Al I'm not gonna copy your style I mean I don't think she gives a crap one way or the other but I just feel like um and it's a very bad habit of mine it's one that I discovered a long time ago is that I do emulate styles like I start picking up on things and actually you can see it in the draw pile sketches I start mimicking her ways of doing things because I'm seeing her as she's doing them and I'm like oh that's neat I want to try that and then all of a sudden I'm doing it so I try really hard not to do that. I think it's great to learn from each other and everything as long as you don't lose what makes you uniquely you. You know, she likes my art because it's my art and I like her art because it's her art. And it's like, just imagine if all of a sudden we're drawing the exact same thing. It's like, we would have nothing to look forward to from each other. So, just throwing that out there. But yeah, I did honestly will admit to the fact that I emulated her style there. Yes. But look, look, look. It turned out so good. It really did. It actually looks like her character, so I'm like, ah, yes. Alright, so let's move on. Cherry and Jasper. This is going to be my finalized design for Jasper. I decided that all the swooshy back hair that I do for Edwing, and, like, I've been doing that for, like, and I just haven't had the guts to do it on my own characters. I was like, I do like it. Um, I don't like how full it is around the ears, though, so I might, I might do something here. But I was also working with other hairstyles too later on, so I'll look at those. And I'm still messing around more with it, but I do like this initial idea for Jasper, and I think I'm going to kind of stick with it. Um, just kind of, I don't know, 
I want to give him like this, oh, what's, what's the term? Like, I don't want to say Hercules sort of like perfect face sort of thing, but I want Cherry to be able to make fun of him because he looks like, a, like, I guess the the way that they worded it was Wonder Boy. Like, I want her to be able to make fun of that because it's like, you're just trying to be a superhero and yeah. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, Cherry, of course. I don't need any help with her. She draws herself. True facts. She owns me. Uh, I was working on this. Yeah, see, I was talking here about how he's too pretty to be a bounty hunter and stuff like that. Uh, just a quick reference on their size differences. Uh, he's a little bit taller than her, not like massively taller than her, about half a head or so. And yeah, so just kind of for reference. Yeah. Um... There is that little snippet, again, that I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. It's on my DeviantArt, it's on my Facebook, it's on, not my Facebook, my Tumblr, whatever. Um, it's over on my stuff. It, it's just that little snippet of writing that I've done for her about her approaching the bounty hunter. Well, that bounty hunter ends up being Jasper. And basically, she pawns him. I mean, it's not hard to do. But he's basically running in there like, oh, I'm going to make this big bounty. I'm going to get this terrible wanted criminal. And she's just like, mm, no, you're not. Yeah, and that's how they're going to meet, I think. I haven't really 110% decided, but it is what it is. So this is kind of like one of their first meeting things. She boops them. She boops them. I love the nose boop. Uh, I was working a little bit more on his face here, but I was like, structure, who needs that? A little Piper Lizrain kiss because every now and then I just got to toss one of those in there. And this is actually a very, very good kiss. I like it. I like how it turned out. I might actually finish it. haven't decided. I got a little Piper over here, just chilling, naked. I like drawing ba bathing scenes too. That's like the other thing I like to draw. But yes, the kissing scene is always my favorite. Anyway. Again, covered up so you guys don't see. This is a little princess design idea I had for Piper. She always keeps her hair off to the side. She keeps it down even though it's not considered right. Um, she shows off her cleavage because, you know, she can. Uh, I've got her to where she's got um, the skirts parted so you can see actual leg and everything because she don't care. She's fine. She's super hot. She doesn't care. Her attitude really isn't like that either. <laughs> she just, she's taught how to dress and told how to dress and she just follows those orders. She's basically taken care of. So, and princesses back in the day, I mean, they're proper, don't get me wrong, but you know, she's kind of in her own house and she wants to look good for her husband. So she's going to look good for her husband. So sue her. And I think this is the last page, yes. Um, I was just kind of posing out Cherry. I was going to have her with like this huge mallet and she's about ready to just boof on someone like coming up behind her or coming up next to her or coming after her. Um, but I kind of gave up on it. Like I started the pose and I was like, no. But I should have at least drawn the hammer. She's got a stick. She's got the handle. She's ready to go, but... Ready to go, but no engine. And then I started working on... um hairstyles again and I'm gonna again go back and visit some of these I like this one and I kind of finished it out but we will see because I'm not sure I like the flat head portion of it it's like uh, a little bit too flat there poor guy he ain't got no school so it's stuff to work on um again I like sketching out my ideas so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see I told myself I was gonna at least develop one develop one character this week and I did which was Jasper and then beyond that it's like everything's just icing on the cake and then these are just notes up here for digital inking because I'm trying to do better with that I tend to just use a brush pen and just use my stylus and just do it the way I um the way that I sketch and I'm finding that my hand sometimes isn't steady enough or it starts strong and I do really really good line work and then it just kind of fizzles um I mean I still think my line work is pretty good but it could always be better. So I'm kind of looking into other options of how to do it. I mean, Photoshop is an amazing program and it can do so many things. And I barely scratched the surface of what it can actually do. So I'm just trying to improve myself overall as an artist. Like my sketching, I want to improve on and learn how to use my regular tablet. I want to do better inks and I definitely want to do better colors. And I really, really want to get into coloring the actual lines themselves to kind of give that dimensionality to my pieces. I did it for a couple pieces not too long ago and it still kind of felt stiff and pixelated but I think with the proper inks and and potentially vectoring it it'll look better but I don't want it to look that clean either I'm like Ugh, stuck 
because I like sketchy. <laughs> but I hate, I absolutely hate, I mean, Vector is beautiful and everything, but I don't like my work in Vector. I just, I like other people's work in Vector. But maybe just for solid inks, it's Vector might be the way to go. But we'll see. It's all stuff to mess with in the, in the meantime. It's just stuff to think about and do. But that's it for this week's video. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Comment below. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. Um, I hope you guys all have an excellent, excellent weekend. Everybody, I guess, should go see Deadpool. I hear it's a really good movie. I want to go see it, but I don't have any money right now. So <laughs> eventually I'll see it. But um, everyone's raving about it. So I'm like kind of excited for it. But other than that, have a good safe weekend and I'll see you guys all in next week's sketchbook review.